All right, welcome back. Hope you guys enjoyed the previous video on the stance. As promised, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the mechanics that go into the Wing Chun punch. So let's first start with the fist. Uh, the fist, as you guys know, it is vertical in Wing Chun. And the reason being for that is because basically all four knuckles are able to make contact with the target as opposed to in a horizontal fist where really you only end up using uh, these two knuckles right here. So I want to talk about the tension that goes into the hand. And in every Wing Chun hand technique, it involves the natural tension um, or even just slight amount of tension with the index finger and the thumb. If you manually try to do that, what you're gonna end up feeling is a little bit of tension in the wrist or tightness in the wrist. And one thing that I've become aware of is that if you actually stretch your palm, it, already, it automatically creates that natural tension in your index finger, thumb, and the other three fingers end up balancing out. This is no different from what I've discussed in the stance video where as you go through each stage, you're actually maintaining your vertical by stretching the top part of the spine at the base of the neck and then at the bottom of the spine where the hips roll forward, okay? There's also that aspect of the feet too where by the time you get through that fourth stage, your foot is typically arched like this and what happens is it stretches out and you should be able to feel balance between the heel and the ball of the foot. So again, this stretch in the palm for the fist is no different. You wanna maintain that as you curl the fingers back to make your fist. And in this regard, I actually don't feel any tension in my wrist, all right? It's nice, no tightness. When it comes to arm position, a lot of times you'll hear people say that your arm should be, or the elbow should be about a fist length away from the ribs. If I do that, I have a hard time sinking the elbow. So the reference point that I use is, again, back to the stance, which is on that flip and the pullback. Remember, spine stretch here, and then it creates that mobility in the shoulder being able to go forward, and then the elbow pulling back with my forearm parallel to the ground and my fist level with my chest, okay? If I move it forward right here, I can feel the elbow sink and I would say my fist is roughly about the top of my sternum, okay? So that's easy reference for position um, in terms of the punch. What it also does for me, if I have the correct positioning, is that I'm able to really just push the elbow out with a punch. If my, my elbow is sunk too much and too far back instead of in front of my body, then what happens is I have to bring it up in order to shoot the punch out. And commonly what's going to happen if you don't really pay attention to that is you'll end up popping the punch. And if you pop the punch over a long period of time, you're actually going to create some uh, major injury for yourself there. So if you keep the elbow in the, at, or keep the arm at the right height, you should just be able to push it out with the, with the elbow. In terms of height that the, that the fist travels along that path, it should be level with your shoulder, okay? If you're doing all those things correctly, instead of rising up or popping down, okay? Those are some exaggerations. I know it doesn't happen that much, but you know, even just the slightest bit of you being off can actually create a lot of bad habits. So you have to be aware of that. You're trying to perfect the motion, okay? Another key component is figuring out or understanding why you are developing the punch. Yes, you're developing it to be able to, you know, attack and to be able to hit your target, hit your opponent, but in this situation, you have to also remember the difference between development and application. You are developing this stretch from the shoulder Right? There's an opposite motion that's occurring here. The shoulder is actually holding at the base of the body while the elbow pushes out. All right? um, we've used 
the rubber band example, if you guys remember that. Basically, if I hold the rubber band on one end in place and I take the other end and stretch it, this represents your body, the base, which is holding. And then this other side is the elbow pushing out away from the body. So you have to be able to hold that within stillness. The other thing is targeting, all right? If your hands are in the correct position, then that means that they're in the center line. And I always wanna be able to take that center line when I extend out. In order to do that, I have to make sure that I'm staying square and not overturning the punch, all right? So that targeting actually comes from right here at your center. And this is stuff that I can go into more detail in a separate video where, how, you know, where I'll talk about the overall structure that's going on when you're working on the punch in combination with the body structure, all right? Um, and then I guess the last thing that I'll talk about too is the position on the pullback or what, what's happening on that pullback motion. So here I am, punch is out. When I bring this arm back, what I have to do is I actually have to travel underneath in a circular motion because I can't let that interfere with this other hand. They're gonna clash, okay? So when I pull the arm back, it's actually going underneath, circling underneath back to the height, the original height that I started at, which actually if you're using both hands, you'll see that it ends up at about roughly the elbow of, of your other hand, okay? Under, under. And you wanna make sure that you get the timing right on that too, so that it, the motion on the pullback starts at the same time that the other hand is coming out and it finishes simultaneously, all right? So when I punch out, the drawback comes back at the same time on the finish of, of the other punch, okay? So, I hope that some of those details into the mechanics of the punch help you out in your training. Again, I'll probably end up covering some more details um, of the overall structure in a later video. But if you have any questions, again, please leave them in the comments section. And thanks for watching.